than another hero. It's not easy by any means, so... Um, although he he is pretty tanky, he could tank up a lot of the early damage from PA. Um, I don't know, it's going to be tough, I think, regardless. So, last ban coming up, they did ban out the Spectre, surprisingly enough. I'm pretty sure Kuro's played that a couple of times, but I haven't seen it personally. So, I think that's a good choice, but how do you ban against Kuroki, man? Like, he has so many freaking heroes, what do you do up against him? Huh. Well, picking down now is a good start. In general, yeah. they're obviously going to be going for a physical damage dealer here. They've got the natural order, they've got the weave. You want to follow that up with a physical damage dealer heavily. So, whatever carry you pick up, you're going with. As a, and the band is difficult, but if you pick up the Omni Knight here, you're going to be able to answer whatever it may be. So, uh, I think that's going to be a pretty strong. The Guardian Angel has a lot of potential here, and it's not like Dazzle or ET can casually go for a Diffusal Blade anytime soon. It's going to be a very gradual approach there. So, yeah, uh, Kuro is going to be able to get a, a really good option but they can still maybe pick him off with a bat rider and they can nullify some of his damage in the fights with the omni so overall i think that's pretty strong and the fact that team secret don't have a silence hero is going to be making that actually difficult for them to break through yeah this is a really solid choice so we saw this last game or yesterday rather against cloud nine for british pro polar and it worked out extraordinarily well um so i like the choice from british pro polar but secret go for the clinks and this is another hero that i i, I would argue that kuroki is famous for um, but, again, you have so many heroes that he could honestly just say, Hey, what do I feel like playing today? And they'll, they'll give him that hero. They'll be able to get it. Because more often than not, they're going to not be able to ban it. So, yep, we will be jumping into the game. And, of course, this is Virtus Pro Poles, uh, uh, Team Secret. And, uh, of course, second game of the day. Now, again... Before the last game, Team Secret, they were at 8-2. and two, Versus Propola were at 8-4, and four, so pretty close in regards to uh, standings. But now Team Secret is up in first place alone. They'll be sitting at 12 points currently with, I believe, a 9-2 and two record. Team Secret and Virtus Propola are having uh, a bit of a battle here, as we will wait. Uh, for whatever reason, Secret of Time into the game, and it looks like they will finally pick up their heroes. They, they wanted to decide who was playing what, it looks like. So, jumping into the game. Secret Invertus Pro Polar. Let's see these other... Oh, nice. <laughs> you want, mate? And then, what do we have here? We saw that one already. We got the Axe Shop. Is there anything else that I'm missing? Looks like that's it. Effigies are always fun to look at. So, for your Radiant side, Secret, your number one seed, it looks like, perhaps coming out of the Group B... Uh, for Dota Pit League Season 2, they've played extraordinarily well. Big Daddy No-Tail playing your Elder Titan yet again, no surprise there. Joining him is going to be S4 on the Zeus, who will probably head mid momentarily. They get the Observer Ward up for Mag, and they might see him. They're going to spot him out, I believe, and they should know that the ward was placed here. Puppy has the sentries. They're going to try to body block Mag down. He's got boots first. He could just Firefly here in a moment. Astro's going to go in, and he is going to pop the Firefly, and I don't know if they chase this down. Um, they're going to spot him out, but he is going to get across the river, and they will harass him a bit more. So, Puppy is on your dazzle, as I was saying earlier. Kuroki, you're safe when Clink's playing uh, really well in these past couple of days. His farm has been absolutely extraordinarily, and that does leave in the offlane. Sibyl playing your tide hunter. No surprises. For your side of Rotus Pro Polar, we will have Lil playing up your Vengeful Spirit up at the top lane. Meanwhile, we'll have FNG, or Raid for X Gods, playing your Omni Knight. And joining them is going to be Polar's... Illidan Storm Rage with this with the tag Shirley Finette from Code Geass. He's playing the Phantom Assassin. Mid lane, it's going to be DK Phobos playing your Puck, and then bottom lane, it is going to be Mag playing your Bat Rider. So a hero he is pretty familiar with as well. So just standard three one one lineups coming up for both squads. Virtus Pro Polar could easily get a kill into the Tide Hunter, but the same could be said of Secret up against the uh, the Bat Rider. So we'll see if they can bring either of these heroes down and. Who is going to win this mid matchup? DK Phobos has been godlike in a couple of his games on Puck, so this should be pretty good. And S4, he is going to use his Arc Lightning to get a couple of CS as well. Bottom lane. Already, No Tails is just going to toe to toe with Mag here with his right click and his Astral. Searing Arrows goes in as well, and Kroki is just going to try to CS as well as do some harass damage. And early Searing Arrows is going to do some work against Mag, no matter how quick and speedy he is. And even with Firefly, he has the potential of dying. No-Tail is walking this fine line of the tower aggro. Max is going to get caught out. He does have Firefly. He's going to get and Searing Arrow. And moves back up to the high ground. Moves to the low ground. He's juking. He's jiving. I've got a bat. You can't catch me. Top lane. Simba maybe getting caught out here. They're looking for... Nah. Nah, he's fine. He's good to go. Alright. So currently, five last is for Zeus. S4 has that. DK Vobo is sitting on an ult talisman. So he's got some extra right click. I'm kind of curious. 
Will they stack up? Well, just kidding. They're not going to stack this up. I, I answered my own question as they put the Observer Ward down to make sure there's no Ancient spawning whatsoever. Maybe could then, uh, you know, use the sentry at some point. They did, by the way, as I was talking about this, they denied this ward coming out from uh, Virtus Propolar. They made sure they sentry that immediately, so. Yeah, Simba's gonna find the ancient stack not there. Uh, he's gonna look for it. And... Damn. <laughs> he's just like, well, that's unfortunate. Might have to head to the jungle. He is level 2, so he was getting a bit out of the line. Um, two minute runes gonna spawn for S4 in the top rune spot. FAG was looking for it. He has to walk home. Head hanging low, but Mag is going to pick up a regen rune. Mm, doesn't help him that much, but uh, he'll just pop his Firefly and then... He's got to be careful though. Firefly is on a pretty long cooldown and the duration is decent, but... Level 2, again, Elder Titan, like he did in the last game, holding his points so No-Tail not getting his stomp or his natural order yet. They want to make sure if they can get a kill, he is going to go for the stomp actually. So he picks that up. Simba just leeching some experience here from the lane. And so far, standard. Nobody's getting caught out. Nobody's dying. It's a bit of a slow, methodical process to this game so far. Yeah, I mean, there is some potential for the Tide to get uh, picked off if he's playing as aggressive as he is, Simba, really far forward. But he is up against an Omni Knight level 1, so it's not like there's much kill potential there. So he can kind of just do his own thing, maybe even steal some jungle experience so that the Omni doesn't level as quickly. Um, yeah, we're going to actually see some very deep auto crowing coming in. The beleaguered courier here at 245 movement speed until it gets upgraded by the supports. And oh, yeah, it's going to be just uh, DK Phobos taking the that... Courier and pretty much making the most of it as he can, but it just it's just kind of a point of emphasis there that because DK Phobos has yet to pick up a magic stick here at three minutes That uh, he is getting harassed a lot more heavily than normal because that arc lightning does really smart though The magic stick will be on its way with the next uh, courier. Yeah, this is s4 now is gonna be Maybe not having as good of a time, but he's still doing pretty well with 17 last hits. They are tied I mean while bottom lane mag is he's playing a dangerous game um, Stomp could go, but they're not going to use it. It looks like Mag is just going to harass and try to leech as much experience and gold as possible from this jungle. And so, so far, I mean, it's just, again, it's this farming game. Um, Kuroki sitting at 23 last hits, Ilden sitting at the same. So I think it really comes into when do you get your level 6s for Secret or uh, for Virtus Propolar, and how effective do you use your ultimates when we get to that point? Because I don't see anything breaking out anytime soon. Yep, just, uh, I mean, a little bit of back and forth, small skirmishes, but nothing critical. We're going to see the rune go top. It is going to be a haste rune, so that's going to be nice for DK Phobos. Not necessarily getting him a kill, but uh, causing S4 some frustration as he actually just pops the bounty rune immediately. He knows he's going to be using that bottle pretty actively, so no point in waiting the full minute for, like, what, five gold or whatever. Yeah. Um, Mag's going to be picking up his Tranquil Boost pretty soon. At that point, it's going to be difficult to zone him out, but still possible. Um, they have, obviously, this Elder Titan who can pretty much brawl with him with this magic stick up and they actually are going to try to close in on him get a little bit of vision out but scouting to the south they're not going to be able to pick him off now i'm actually really curious how this clinks is going to itemize early on like obviously we see the clinks generally speaking go for an orchid but we have seen some clinks go greedy and go for a midas so they can kill off two creeps one with a death pact one without and then uh he could go for something like a blink dagger for mobility mm -hmm. um and also i want to mention that there is a real possibility for him to go for a defusal this game the searing arrows is not a unique attack modifier so you actually do get mana burn per shot and while it's not an ideal pickup he's an agility hero and he's up against an omni knight i still think it's a pretty good selection for him yeah i mean that could uh, i mean just to get that item i think it's worth it at that point simba's gonna get closed in on here in this bottom lane they they ping him out they know he's there wave is gonna go they're gonna get vision and this might be your first blood anchor smash is gonna go but simba um he yeah. can't even tp because the magic missile has not been used yet and he's just gonna try to right click first blood does go to lil and uh they could have given that to Illidan, but it looks like they don't mind too much, so nice play coming out to catch him out of position, so uh -huh. and, and there it is. Indeed. And I'm curious if Illidan is going to be going for a standard build now. He goes for the treads. He still definitely could go for the Battle Fury, but uh, we also saw this earlier a uh, couple days back where when they had an Omnion on the team played by FNG, they actually went for a Lincoln Sphere very early on, so the Diffusal Blade logic wouldn't work out. Or at least that's what I believe yes, the reasoning yes. behind it was. So it's still very possible for him to go Battle Fury to really amp up his farm, but I think Lincoln's is in the cards for him. Yeah, I mean, and Lincoln's for generally anybody from British Propolar. You're probably going to see Puck pick it up at some point in this game. Um, big crit on Simba though, so this is where it's going to be kind of difficult for Simba to lane because now Ilda could just right click with Reckless Abandon and he won't take too much damage and he can also get a couple of crits as well. Meanwhile, the Astro coming in, DK Phobos was getting low and 
Big Daddy chased him all the way out of the lane, so DK Phobos got caught out, but they don't get the kill. Puppy and S4 is just pushing down this mid lane. And that is the Midas that you were talking about for Kuroki, so he's got to go for the greedier build. But I mean, this since he has a really good stable mid game from his team lineup, and they can always draw it out a little bit later if they want to, it's good to pick it up here at the six minute mark. It's not like he needs to be ganking the enemy jungle and finding orchid pickoffs in order for his hero pick to be worthwhile. He could definitely go for a carry type of setup, but he's going to oh. be ganked down bottom. They're going to dust him up. Good stomp, though, but the Dream Coil still is going, and it's going to snap as well. Kuroki getting healed up on the Waning Rift. He is going to fall. The Creeps blocked him in. Oh, my gosh. He's sick. He is mad as hell. Phobos is taking a lot of damage from No-Tail. I don't think they can get this kill. They do have Purification oh, up. FNG still and here, though. They get the vision of him is going to go. FNG. FNG is spotted out. They know that he's here, and the trees blocked him, and he's going to get right-clicked, and they're going to get the kill. So at least they get something out of that exchange. Ooh, baby. FNG is like, are you kidding? That tree yeah, actually just And S4 on the mid lane is about to kill off Lil here. He has the vision. Gets the second arc lightning here. And yeah, the low HP Venge from the ultimate being cast uh, should not have been sticking around that long. Yeah, that was uh, an easy kill coming out, just coming from S4. So a couple of kills going the way of Secret. A couple of kills going for British Pro Polar. And now they're pressuring this bottom lane. So Kroki, he does get ganked as soon as he gets that Midas. But again, he, sh he can get plenty of farm very quickly. Um, whether through getting ganks, whether through taking towers, through his searing arrows and strafe. They are putting pressure on the tier 1 bottom. I don't know if they... They have the double siege creep as well, which is uh, pretty nice. They might actually just be able to take this tower. They're going to glyph it. Puppy! Look out, buddy. That tower is hitting you pretty hard, man. That Up was top, close. Illidan really wants a crit here. He's not finding it just yet. Finally gets the dagger out, and there's the crit. I mean, right with that anchor smash. So he will finally bring him down, diving all the way to the tier 2. He doesn't need the, the crit at the end there. It was more than enough to get the kill with just his right click, but I guess he's happy. That's just a, a nice way to execute somebody. Just blood spoils all over the floor, and poor Tidehunter is just dead on the ground. So FNG is going to throw down another Observer Ward. They are really making sure Simba is not getting anything out of this game. And level 4, 490 gold. He's not doing super bad, but, you know, he'd like to be doing a bit better, obviously. Mm hmm I like the stack coming out here from Puppy. It's not actually going to be really farmed up in an AoE sense. At least it doesn't need to be. Kuroki can just use this as kind of a hard creep farm, where the big creeps he dark pa death packs, as well as Midas's, and he's going to be able to get a lot of gold out of that. But there's going to be some pressure on Tide. He will have to sav up on the top lane. But I think Kuro's going to be making his move pretty soon. Like, he's got the HP, the damage. He could actually find, like, an early gank opportunity. It's not necessary, but, I mean, definitely would be unexpected. I think it would be good if they could get involved and kill Ilden because, I mean, this guy's going to have a battle fury pretty soon. He picks up the broadsword, and he's getting free farm at a couple of kills as well to his name. Uh, but Kuroki, he has the two points at a skeleton walk. He'll probably, I mean, Max skeleton walk is so good, and you can see he's fast already with level two, but Mag was looking for him, doesn't actually catch him out of position. And this game is definitely a lot closer for Virtus Pro Polar than in the previous one. Whatever they did in the draft and whatever they did uh, in between games is certainly working out, at least now. Mm -hmm. that, but that could change. Yeah, I mean, right now it's it's kind of a, a passive lineup from Secret since the Zeus does He's not like a YOLO hero. Like at 10 minutes, if he had a blink dagger, he still wouldn't be diving under the towers because he doesn't have an ultimate that facilitates that. So mm -hmm. I think it is kind of that Brewmaster band coming into play that the tempo has reduced a little bit for the side of Team Secret. And they're going to be, like we saw, picking up things like Hand of Midas and going in for the mid game rather than emphasizing just dominance in the uh, post laning phase. So, this is uh, going to be, I think right now, you look at the last hit, 68 coming out for the Phantom Assassin, but again, Kuroki's been farming up the jungle, you talked about the uh, death pack coming in, him getting some of those creeps in the, of course, the big camp, which was stacked up, he cleared that as well, and they are going to give Puppy some farm, it looks like, again, they're going to prioritize getting some experience for some of these supports, which is what uh, pretty much every team does now, so at this point, Virtus Pro Polar, now they have to deal with the four staff from S4, so he's got some mobility. Ravage shouldn't be up yet for... Yeah, it's not for Simba. So they really need to get him some farm. He will have his Arcanes pretty soon. In fact, he's going to go buy them, I think, for the secret shop. But uh, I don't know. At this point, we might see Virtus Pro Polar just play defensively. They don't... Oh, Zeus Salt going to go phase shift, but they cannot get the kill. I think they've already used the stomp. I'm not sure. No, it's actually ready, but no, nah, they can't get it off. DK Phobos is going to just back away. And you heard that Zeus Salt animation going, but... <laughs> mm -hmm. No, no such luck there.
Now there's gonna be an attempted at stack here on the Radiant Ancients. Actually succeeds. This ward is not blocking it. That's wow. a yeah. Obviously they put that there to try to shut down the tide. But end of the day, we just saw with our own two eyes that does stack, and that is gonna be a triple out for Simba here. So kind of awkward that they invested that and didn't get anything from it. I wonder where the box is. I wonder where the spawn box is. It's for gotta this be group. just to the east of that. I mean, yeah. I, I can imagine it's just literally just just next to it, and they messed it up only slightly. Yeah, that's so a bit unfortunate and. <laughs> They're like, yeah, they're not going to get any stacks in the Ancients, and Radiant all of a sudden Simba's going to come out and he's going to have, like, a Blink Tag or something. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be that fast, but... I mean, you look at it, though, Radiant I don't know if Virtus Pro Polar mine, because this Battle Fury is Radiant very close for Tower Illidan Storm Rage. They do have the Vengeance War as well. Now they're going to jump onto Big Daddy. There's a Stomp going, and he doesn't get a single crit proc. That is what he was looking for. Now he's going to have to jump away. There's the Purification. Ooh. Repel is going to go, and he's just going to run it as four. He gets a couple of crits. Earth Splitter, Body Blocks going in. They do have no Ravage here. The Anchor Smash and the Lightning Bolt. What a die from Illidan, man. He's like, I'm going to get a kill, but no. No, you're, you're just going to die, buddy. Kind of a bit yeah. unfortunate. Did not expect four heroes to rotate to try to defend E.T. that time around, but nobody messed with Big Daddy No-Tail. That's what, uh, obviously, S4 has to say, and the early repel is only lasting at six seconds, so it's uh, it's nice to allow him to man up a little bit, but it's not going to be the end-all, be-all. Puppy going to be lassoed up, should not be able to get Shallow Grave, but the stomp gives him enough time. He does get the Grave off, and they will fight this out. Big Daddy's gonna get magged missile. The purification, it might not matter. They both will die, it looks like. One more right click, they will get it magged. Also pop the flame break just in case. And Phobos actually gets a pretty early blink dagger, all things considered, but he didn't go for treads first, so maybe not that early. But a good two kill uh, rotation coming in from Virtus Pro Polar while Ilden is still farming in the top lane. Mm -hmm. Did force uh, Simba back there. He's not gonna ravage just to harass the PA. He's going to TP out in those situations, so he's going to have the Ravage up to maybe bring to the mid lane here. They have Thunder God's Wrath up as well, so, I mean, there's some real potential for them to find kills with those two ultimates online, but in the meantime, Kuro has not left the jungle. He's just been, okay, Midas this, Death Pack that, and it's allowed the supports to actually take the lane. Have a puppy was farming down bottom for a little bit, now Big Daddy No-Tail's there, and yeah, they're going to be able to actually build up their overall net worth. Uh, he has the Sol Ring now, and I mean, he has a lot of options here. We've already talked about his potential itemization, and we'll have to wait and see. He has 1,500 gold in the bank. He could have picked up a Blade of Alacrity if he was going to go for that early Diffusal, but maybe he wants a Blink Dagger, could get an early BKB perhaps. The Orchid, he would probably build up a, a Quarter Staff or something, but they are going to catch out Mag, it looks like. Stomp would have to go. There's the Strafe as well, and Flame Break, the Zeus Ult coming out, and he's taking a lot of damage. One more right click, the Stomp does miss, and Mag is going to get all the way over to the other side of the river. They do not spot him out. They almost got that kill, but no such luck. Koroki, one right click away. In the meantime, Simba just farming up these ancient creeps here. Is going to be having that blink dagger if he wants it now, or can go for the arcane boost. He shouldn't really go mechanism before arcane, so I don't think that's a choice. But one of the two others definitely could be, as he's actually going to back off being out of mana to blink online. Good choice, but again, he might have some mana issues early on here, but... With no gush, I don't know if he really cares that much. He just wants mm. to get the ravage. He does off have two arcane boots on his smash. team, right? The the right, Zeus yeah. and the Dazzle, so relatively good utility if they collaborate. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's not like he has no way of getting all his abilities off. So while that was happening, though, I mean, there it is. Elden, 14 minute battle fury and treads, not bad considering. Mm -hmm. um, and with the Vengeance Aura. If they could find pickoffs, they certainly could get kills, and especially once it gets to level two, uh, coup de gras, uh, the crit. And he actually has it now, so the extra damage is going to come through. But here we go, smoke to see. But everyone is here for secret. Lasso onto Kuroki. Do they have vision? They lasso him up. They dust. No, they they actually haven't used it yet. FNG. Now there's going to be the Guardian's Angel going in. Stomp not going to go. They use the Lightning Bolt. FNG is getting low. Big Dream Coil onto three. They blow up two. They're looking for another. They're going to find them. Huge play from DK Phobos. He does it again on this puck. He's not done yet. He's looking for Kuroki. Dust is going to go. And they get the crit from the dagger. You're going to see Illidan jump in in just a second. It looks like another dagger going in. Swap out. They want the magic missile. Four done. Phobos with a double kill. The only one not there. Simba cannot ravage. Cannot help his team out. And it's the tiniest difference, but the fact that Simba did not have a TP scroll because he, could, he only had 60 gold when he left the well, uh, they, that completely changed the, how the fight panned out. That big silence initiation was the trump card for VP Polar, and without the Ravage, Secret did not have the answer. They only pick off the Omni on the back end, they lose the four, and they just have to be really feeling really uneasy about that. They need this Ravage to do work. Uh, they've been holding the Thunder God's Wrath for half the game now, trying to 
actually make that combo happen. And soon enough it will, but they've already lost a lot. Yeah, they're going to try to find this ancient stack, but Elden is going to get repelled up, and this is going to be a hard gank to go for now. They already back away. They clear the ancient so quickly that it doesn't even matter. And I, I got to say, DK Phobos with some exceptional play. He gets his Midas as well, so he's going for that build that we've seen a bit. Blink Ravage going in. Onto two. They get the kill immediately. Onto the poor Phantom Assassin. Good usage of that purification. Stomp goes in onto Mag, but the repel saves the life of the Omni Knight. But the bigger thing is that they get the PA kill. I think that's a really good, really, really good usage of that Ravage there. So, the tier 1 tower are going to be taken quite easily here. It is actually going to be the second tower that they're able to acquire for themselves, but let's see if they can kind of suppress VP Polar's map control a little bit more, get some aggressive wards up on the back of that, and start limiting PA's potential to the jungle. Because as it stands right now, PA is going to go very quickly for that Lincoln Sphere on the back of that Battle Fury, and uh, she can farm it up extremely quickly. She already cleared out the Ancients, she can clear out the jungle quickly, and uh, the rest of the time, VP Polar can find pickoffs with the Lasso. And speaking of the last two, they're going to find Kuroki as well, and he gets caught out top lane. Another great kill for DK Phobos as well, and he's just sitting out of position there. I mean, his team was sort of behind him with S4 and no tail, but they weren't quite there yet. And now they're just kind of stuck in limbo. They're going to back away with the Smoke of Deceit. This does give room for Puppy to push bottom. Ooh, FNG's not too close to the PA. They're going to jump right on her. A lot of nuke damage coming out, but she will not be healed up in time. Omni Knight's spells canceled by the Earth Splitter. And uh, just that small amount of distance is enough for them to bring her down in that short span. Yeah, honestly, that, that was... It was kind of the same thing that it just had happened to Kuroki. Uh, but mm. the Omni Knight is a bit more important to the survival of Ilden. So kind of weird... You maybe want to have some um, mobility if you're an Omni Knight. Maybe in this game you might want to pick up something like a Blink, but at the same time that might be a waste as well. Or just some movement speed. I don't really know what you go for on an Omni Knight. Maybe an Ag, but it might be too early for that. I don't know. I love Blink Dagger on Omni Knight, but it is very difficult to justify for a support. If you get a like a farming roll set in the lane, that's fine. But this guy's got 23 CS total. It's going to be, if at all, it's going to be a very s slow one for him. So yeah. I imagine he just goes for for uh, maybe like a Vladimir's offering so that they get the positive armor even when they're hit by the natural order and such. But in general, yeah, it's going to be a, a game where he needs to emphasize positioning because he's not going to have much mobility for him. Yeah, I mean, this is... And we saw in that last engagement, I mean, if you are a slightest bit out of position, there's a good chance one of your heroes, more specifically your Phantom Assassin, get and die, so... Oh, under the Sentry uh, Ward, S4 will be taking S4, some hits, but he swap. will just force stab himself out. Yeah, that's... They needed all well, the the invis is done. Now they're gonna find it to no tail. The crit from the stifling dagger, it's gonna stifle him indeed, and Big Daddy's gonna get caught out, and the kill is going to go to Puppy's still here? Puppy, what, what are you doing, on? buddy? He's gonna get crit the double kill. He couldn't even get his grave off. Ooh. And now they wanna keep fighting. Croaky is like, I'm in some trouble. Ravage was about to go. Now they're gonna pop the group claws while waiting. Red Phobos oh, with a huge play. Triple kill and Ilden Stormrage is going to work. Ultra Kenny get the Rampage at 20 minutes. S4 Aww. is going to try to get out. Magic Mr. Swap TV. anything. No, no Rampage for you, Ilden Stormrage. What a fight, though. This guy is on top of his game. Absolutely. That's still a PA Ultra Kill here at the 19 minute mark, and that is going to be insanely enhancing his farming potential. And Team Secret, they just really should have cut their losses there. With Big Daddy No Tail going down, they could have just walked away, but Puppy, he goes right into it. He says, We've got Ravage, you've got Thunder God's Wrath. Underestimating the fact that Omni Knight has a full duration repel now. I think it was only 8 or 10 seconds in that fight, but now he's up to level 11, and he's got all the skill points he'll, he could desire. So, yeah, in this situation, they really were trying to wait out the repel so they could get the Ravage Thunder God's Wrath off and bring down the PA quickly and instead she just tears them apart uh, obviously showing the strength of the Omni Knight behind the PA. Yeah exactly and I love the fact that they've gone for the Omni Knight two days in a row and it's worked out so well for them in this situation and it's good because they last picked it I believe it and uh, it, it really helps them out. Last mm -hmm. is going to go for Mag he's going to pull Puppy across the river and um, he probably will be able to grave. I don't even know if he's going to have to use it. He will now He'll stay alive. Earth Splitter onto Mag, catching him out of position. Zeus Salt goes, and finally that combo Ooh. actually is pay off. Lincoln Sphere now for Illidan. He's going to jump in. And he does have the repel. He's got the Lincoln Sphere, but he is kind of low in health. He's got to be careful. Blinks back towards FNG, and uh, he'll back himself away. Mag's still down for 30 seconds, and Secret are putting the pressure on. Although they don't have their ultimates, they have 
One Ravage, and that's it. Rappel's gonna go back in. Ilden's looking to jump, but no, they just get it back away. No, Dream Quill goes from DK Phobos. Again, onto two. Puppy, no grave, one dead. That's another kill coming up from Ilden Stormrage. The double kill goes. He is unstoppable. Ravage is gonna hit up onto Ilden. There's the Lincoln Sphere. He's gonna get stomped as well. Kuroki's trying to bring him down. Blur's gonna go in and help with one proc. Kuroki blinks forward. Blur! Blur for days! Oh, Are you kidding me? There's those? no freaking way that should happen! Are you absolutely kidding me? That was unbelievable. It's not going to matter, but I can't believe that. He didn't hit him once. Oh my gosh. This, How much did Kuroki just... pay Ice Frog for that? Wow. Jeez. That's just demoralizing right there. Demoralizing right there. So, I mean, I don't know. At this point, I honestly think that VP Bola have a better strat to be able to take themselves to the late game. And it's going to be on Team Seeker to really upset that. Right now, the combo of the Omni Knight and the PA. It has its weaknesses in the early stages, but now the PA has both Battle Fairy and Lincolns, and the Omni Knight is at level 11. It almost seems unstoppable, as long as they have smart positioning. As it stands right now, Omni Knight's Repel gives PA magic immunity for 12 every 14 seconds. There's only 2 seconds he's not immune to magic. He's essentially permanently BKB. And the Lincoln Sphere makes it so that the Diffusal Blade isn't even an option. If you went for that, you would have to break the Lincolns before he even gets the Repel, and uh, good Omni Knight's not going to let that happen. So I really think the Lincoln Sphere behind the Repel is making this PA nigh immortal when the Omni Knight is alive and available. Can you imagine if they get an Aegis for Ilden as well? Like, how mm -hmm. do you win a fight against him? He could... He could just go to work. Yeah, I'd almost say give the Aegis to the Omni Knight since he's the actually yeah, the yeah, yeah. weak point of that. If they bring down the Omni Knight quickly, then that's that'll I'd be able to get to the PA through him. But if they uh, can't bring down either because of the an Aegis or something, then that's just a guaranteed fight for VP Polar. That's uh, this game has been pretty exciting. I gotta say that that blur. <laughs> Something ridiculous I have not seen that. I've seen some really lucky blur procs, but that was uh, unbelievable. So, for now, Simba has Blink Force. If we look at some of the other items here, what's going on right now? We have Yule Scepter for DK Phobos, as he had the Midas done his treads as well. Soul Booster coming up from S4, interestingly enough, as he has that Force Staff already. I thought he was going to build towards a, an Aghanim Scepter, but that is not the case. He picks up the Soul Booster, so... And Kroki does get a Demon Edge. Maybe the MKB, I imagine. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I would definitely yeah. get that. That'll effectively double his damage against the APA. She did go for a 4-1-4 when she was scaling up, so though she can't fan strike as frequently, she certainly can just stand and deliver because she's going to be only taking half the auto attacks, which uh, makes the RNG more believable for sure. But once that MKB comes out, at least they're going to have some potential to damage her, but you still don't have an answer for the Guardian Angel. Anytime the APA is GA'd up, she is indestructible, and it is going to be very frustrating now that she has the Aegis as well. So yeah, I think the strat has to be to pick off FNG to find a spot where the Omni Knight is not in a good position and to bring him down quickly so you can actually destroy the PA on the back of that. We're going to see the Blink Lasso in though. Puppy looks to be going down. Yeah, easy kill going in for Illidan Storm Rage. She is nowhere near here the rest of his team. He was setting mid, just pushing the wave out. And... Yeah, I mean, you make a good point. I don't know how they're going to do it, but they've got to find a way to get FNG on the back lines. I mean, Ilden is going to be zoning them out so effectively, and DK Phobos, this is the thing as well. They can't jump in if they're Dream Coiled. They can't get Ravage off if they're Waiting Rifted, or, or you know, they can't get the Thunder Guy's Wrath off. So, there's control and to get something Dagger. <laughs> <laughs> no bash. 
The one is that if there is no guardian angel, if he did just maybe there is a possibility that maybe that Kuroki gets up out of the high ground here. Good grave, but he won't, I think, regret it. What a play! That's right there. Really nice movement from him, knowing what they had to do to bail their buddy out, no tear for them. Generally speaking, I look at Tide as a hero that, in potential the form of the Refresher Orb, he can actually take the late game by force. Uh, we obviously seen obviously Big Daddy on the, no, the Elder Titan do that as well, but they just don't have an answer to this PA, and they never will. And that's the thing, you were talking about no, no tail, and he just gets destroyed by Phantom Assassin quickly. There's the Vlads, that was what you called for earlier for this uh, Omni Knight, and you're right on the money there, as he does pick it up. So, Kuroki is going to look for uh, a kill on Lil, but there is going to be Mag, and he doesn't have last, so Dream Quill goes in as well, and Kuroki, with a deep penetration ganking mission, actually just gets obliterated. Although, Lil almost dies, he's still alive, and he's going to head home. And this means a tier 2 tower made, it looks like, as well. Oh, pretty easily. I mean, all that she does is just spam this repel on to the PA who doesn't even take tower damage really with that blur. So, yeah, just cleaning that up with relative ease. And there is, I've said it a lot of times, but there's, there are no options here. They go Ghost Scepter, so they can maybe uh, for as long as possible just make themselves ethereal to the damaging effects of the Phantom Assassin. But end of the day, they're going to have to face her and... All the tank items in the world aren't going to be enough to stop you from just getting critted down. He's going to have an Abyssal soon, and he can buy out for that confidently. He will. Yeah, that's, that's how you know when you're having a good game. Although, they still have Tier 2 Towers, and even if he did die, and, and if he didn't have the Aegis, I still think it wouldn't be that big of a deal. So, And he's also going to get the gem. They, they trust Illidan Stormridge enough this game to have him just be leading the way. And that's wow. exactly what they need to do. So. Yeah. So far, so good. 27 minutes into the game. 10 to 20 the score. And Secret are maybe looking at their potential first loss in eight games against Virtus Pro Polar. And a team that has played so well with the exception of that last game um, not too long ago. And I think they just need to keep playing the way they are. Put the pressure. You talked about the refresher coming out from Titan. I think that, yes, there is a potential late game here for Secret. And I don't know if Virtus Pro, Virtus Pro Polar want to get there. So. Mm -hmm. Well, they're also dancing around Ghost Scepters right now, one on Tide, one on Zeus. That's going to help them to a, a decent degree here, but it, it just delays it in the fight. It spreads the that fight around. S4 is actually going to be going on by Mag here. He's got him pretty lasso. well locked down, but he does not have the lasso any longer. He's still just kind of playing with what he can. If he gets Lightning Bolt, it could be bad, but they just swap him back. Go for uh, the Wave of Terror play up on the cliff. It's going to be Illidan Storm Rage to bring him down. He is going to use the Ghost Scepter now to stay alive. Lightning Bolt goes under the Omni Knight, but S4 is going to fall. That Ghost Scepter saved him for only a moment. Um, they're cutting the Creep Wave, as you could clearly see, but the, the lasso was weird. I heard the lasso sound, and then it was broken a half second later for whatever reason. Um, I'm not sure why, but it, it sounded like the lasso only went for like maybe a half second duration. I don't know what happened there, but... Regardless, they still get the kill anyways, so... Uh, unless the uh, Batrider blinks, I don't see that actually happening, so maybe just an uh, audio bug or something, but... Yeah, probably. No matter the case, uh, they're, they're feeling really confident. They don't even have, like, big cooldowns right now. The Guardian Angel is their longest cooldown at, uh, what, 150 seconds, so... It, there are limited timing windows for Secret to feel confident, and they, even, they haven't even been able to force the GAs in the past several minutes, so... I really don't feel like they have an easy win condition here. Maybe the Elder Titan can look towards an Aghanim Scepter. This is one thing that, uh... I haven't seen No Tail build up. I, I hope he starts considering it in the future, but it is one item that does counteract magic immunity to an extent. You can BKB out of the ET disarm with the Earth Splitter, but if he has the Ag's Earth Splitter on you and you are immune to magic, you'll still be affected by it. So mm. it's at least something to consider. It's not an item that I've seen built, I don't think, ever on this hero, not in Pro Dota at least. Maybe not even in pub games. I Maybe Mopax has a good stat for that. Yeah, Mopax, if you would be so kind as to look that up, I would be very grateful. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but for now, they get a kill on ZK Phobos. I missed that one. It looks like it was in the bottom lane, I believe. No, wait, excuse lane. me, top lane. Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, they ravaged for it. It was just quick again. burst damage from the clinks. Lil's going to get caught out. There's the Lightning Bolt, the Thunder God's Wrath, rather, going in. The Kuroki's going to go with the right click. The MKB is doing a lot. Pipe's going to get popped, and now they have to back away, force out. Mag's looking for a lasso. He's going to find it, and Simba is in some trouble. Purification's going to go. He does have the Ghost Scepter. Flame Break's going to fly. Firefly is doing a lot of work, so if he Ghost Scepter, he would probably just die here. And 
they'll just go down to the right clicks of uh, Mag. So two for one exchange in the end. So not the worst thing in the world, but Simba gets caught out. So, I mean, they are going to be able to pick off a few backliners here, but expending the Raven stuff like that just to get these limited pickoffs, it's not giving them massive influxes of gold. Really, it's just Kuro that's going to be farming up, finding his big thing, and yeah, uh, it's going to be very slow rolling for them to find an opening here. Mechanism, Ghost Scepters, they can survive the PA, but soon enough that PA is going to have that next Aegis up on top of the Abyssal, on top of the Battle Fury, and they're just going to find one pick and go in for the base. I do like what Secret is doing, though, in this top line. They're really forcing out um, the rotations back from Virtus Pro Polar. So it is alleviating some pressure, but it's maybe not enough. Puppy is not in the best spot if Illidan were to catch him out of position, but he seems to know what he's doing. In fact, he's got a TP home now, so Illidan not getting that free kill onto Puppy. And for now, I'm not sure if you talked about this already, but what do you think about Phantom Assassin and uh, her next item after the since the Abyssal Blade huh. is already done with 3.3k gold in the bank? Uh, uh, Satanic sounds perfectly reasonable, just in case they find a way to break through a barrier, get a little bit of extra durability, get that lifesteal up, I think it would be appropriate, but, um, yeah, I don't see any reason not to go that. That could be the nail in the coffin. If, there's, if they can't kill her when she has, you know, uh, the repel as well as the Lincoln Sphere on her, how can they kill her when she has a, a, a goddamn Satanic? It's mm -hmm. just gonna get ridiculous. Bloodstone has been picked up. Kuroki is sitting here on the front lines. The Bloodstone's for Zeus, by the way. Slip goes in. Repel onto Elden Stormrage. They're just going to right-click this tower down. The cliff's going to go, but I don't see secret fighting. They are smoked up. Simba has Ravage in three seconds, and the Tier 2 is already dead. They're not blicking in yet. In fact, they're avoiding any sort of yeah. confrontation here. They're waiting for FNG to make a mistake, but his job is fairly easy here. Repel, repel, repel. Don't be in a position where you can just get locked down, insta-gibbed or disabled. Uh, as long as he can keep the repel up on PA, there is no fight for secret attacks. They're looking for an opening where maybe they can sleep FNG right when repel is wearing off, but although they're primed for it, it seems like he's going to uh, upset them in that regard. It's just so difficult. It's really the only option they have. They're going to blink. Force. Puppy is caught out. This is going to be the start of a fight. Maybe they're going to jump in. They need to back off. Puppy's not dead yet, though. There's the Earth Splitter, and all of a sudden, Illidan is going to fall. The gem is on the deck. Maybe he's not so unkillable. Max going to get caught out as well, and it looks like he will be able to TP out for FNG. The Lightning Bolt. Yeah, I think he had the Purification, or rather the Repel on him, but that's unbelievable. That was the, the first fight I've seen Virtus Pro Polar just kind of give away to a certain extent. FNG, you had one job! He <laughs> really did, man. I don't know what happened there. Ah, uh, never purchased against an Omni. Just three, six, nine times across all of professional Dota since, of course, Agadims did uh. things for ET. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they take a big fight. They bring down the PA. That's a huge gold influx for them. And we're going to see the graphs obviously show that they're able to really build up a lot off of that. But I guess it really does come down to just waiting for FNG to make a mistake, not be in the right position. And, oh, okay, this was another item I was considering. But I feel I've said Diffuse Blade a few too many times in the past two Omni Night games. So I didn't want to mention it. But Diffuse on the PA will break through these Ghost Scepters easily yeah, and make yeah. it very reliable for her to bring down both the Zeus and the Tide. And PA is just going to be like, listen, I know you, you think you have Ghost Scepter, but you're actually just dead already. So, um, But it is something to consider is that there's this notion that Secret doesn't lose in the late game. And that's a pretty <laughs> accurate notion considering how well they've played recently. So even though Virtus Pro Polar have a pretty big margin of a lead, it's not insurmountable. Especially because Kuroki now has two extraordinarily good damage items. Daedalus plus NKB means you are going to hit like a truck, especially if you have death pack up, which you yeah. more than likely will. Yeah, they're just looking for these narrow opportunities. So anytime there is no repel, there is a fight for them. But again, it's two seconds at a time unless FNG is getting oh some distance God. from the PA, which I guess he needs to have some distance because otherwise you can just get caught in a multi-man ravage and you have to watch out. But he can't be too far away or they're going to be losing a huge aspect of their strategy. Now the Aegis will be up in PA, so a lot more room for error here. Uh, beyond that, um, it looks like not only is Simba saving up that 4K for probably the Refresher Orb, uh, but that we are going to be seeing the Elder Titan go for a Lincoln Sphere once again. Mm -hmm. This could be pretty good. And um, I guess it helps against the Diffusal, I suppose, and to a certain extent. Uh, the Lasso obviously is very good, but mm -hmm. um, this is something that, 
you know, it's kind of disconcerting if you're secret. I mean, you have to deal with it. If you use an Alchemist, you still got to go out. The No crit procs coming out from Kuroki, so he actually can't get the kill, and he has to skeleton walk away. And now for Rotus Pro Polar, I think they just need to be able to take one or two big fights, and then they could take a set of racks off the back end of it. In terms of buyback status, for the Radiant team, there's actually three, three heroes with it, and for the Dire team, there's nobody. Buyback's not going to matter as much, I think, for Virtus Pro Polar, but it's still pretty important. So we'll have to wait and see Ooh, when the next big fight's going to be. Rune. If PA gets that and uh, is able to bottle it up or any other way to actually make use of it for its duration, that would be insane. She's just going to grab it. I'm no no waiting it. around here, but whether or not she finds a target is a different story. They have the Observer <laughs> Ward on it, and they will be scared stiff at, at the possibility of that being critting you. And the puppy's just like, I am out of here, goodbye. Yeah, damage. that is, yeah. that's ridiculous. Wow. How about no? How, how about we don't even play the same game with that kind of a hero? Let's just let's, be let's over leave. here on the opposite side of the map. Yeah, let's just let's do the split push thing we've done. But Mag and Lil are going for a smoke gang. A bit of a cheeky play, but this four does TP away smartly. However, Kuroki, do they have a gem here? They don't. They have no dust either. No detection. Kuroki just spots this out. The sentry did go down, but uh, it's a bit too late to the party. There's the refresher coming out from Sibba, and this could be it. Yeah, it's all about the timing now. They get to sleep onto FNG. They could just use their first Ravage on Omni alone, and that would probably be worth it since they have two. Um, have to obviously manage your mana, but again, three Arcane Boots are here, so I think that that could actually be a, a good call. Just actually wait for the Repel to be half over, and then just Ravage the Omni, bring him down, and then bring down Phantom Assassin with the second Ravage. We'll see if they consider it. This is going to be tough. They're still pushing into the top lane, or rather the bottom lane here, but top lane is also getting pushed out. Illidan Storm Rage blinks back away. The rest of the squad is incoming. Mag, if he can get a blink lasso, and they could fight a fight on the back end of this. Uh, I feel like the Virtus Pro Polar, they haven't really initiated these fights in the past couple of minutes, so... If they're the ones to initiate and find a pickoff, they could certainly take this game. They will maybe take a tier 2 tower top lane, but if... Illidan and the rest of the squad could get this tier 3 tower, it's more than worth it. He does have the Aegis, it's reclaimed in two minutes, they're gonna make this work. Tier 2 is now gone, TP back coming in from Kuroki, Illidan's just hitting the tower like crazy. Uh -huh. Lasso's gonna go in, it's gonna go on to Puppy, he is gonna get to the low ground, and Abyssal's gonna go, two shot coming up, Puppy has to buy back, Earth Splitter does miss completely, so that's one of the buybacks expended. Tier 3 tower getting low, they have three more buybacks left by the way. Um, so, they're pretty happy with killing Puppy and forcing a buyback, they'll probably go again. When they get another creep wave, they are on the uh, back side. They're going to jump in. Kuroki's going to try to fight. Oh, Ooh. look at the crit, but there's the Guardian Angel. Dream Call onto four heroes. They blow up Kuro. He's going to have to buy back. The Ravage does go. It does connect it to Illidan. Refresh is going to go as well. Illidan still has that. Uh, he actually gets swapped out. He'll stay alive. Still has the Aegis. Puppy's dead yet again. He's going to keep going here. The Aegis is going to get expended. Ooh, he might actually die the second time here, though. He, he has, has to Phantom Strike very quickly here. The stomp is perfectly timed. Beautiful. No Phantom Strike away. Excellent fight coming out from Secret. They forced to buy back, but they get three kills. They're looking for more. Gush, they cannot get the fourth. As it will be Mag TPing away, but again, a great fight. And the Illidan Storm Rage cannot close the door on this game just yet. Secret are hanging on and doing really well. Yeah, it was a very aggressive and even sacrificial play for Kuro to go on the front lines there. He definitely was exposed. They saw a weakness in their lineup. They knew that they could punish it, but end of the day, uh, they committed the Guardian Angel, the Dream Coil, and they still couldn't take the fight off of that amazing double Ravage. Just Simba, when he gets this Refresh Orb, is a contrib game contributor like no other. He's able to do so much work, and off the back of the two buybacks, they do hold the high ground. As far as golden experience graphs, we do see the experience kind of leveling very uh, steadily here. 2,500, 3,000 experience somewhere around there. But the gold graph still obviously extremely favoring to VP. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I, I want to ask you, at what point do you maybe think about considering a BKB for Phantom Assassin? Because you can't huh. really rely on the Omni Knight all the time because he will still get ravaged he can't he has the cast animation to use the repel and a, a full 10 second bkb could be pretty good against a refresher and yeah. he could maybe do work with a bkb in his own right so 
Yeah, I d definitely think that's a viable, like, kind of, you would use it as a last resort, right? Like, you would hold on right. to it all until you absolutely need to dodge out an incoming Ravage. We saw Mag was able to nullify it, and one of the Ravages was nullified by Repel, but end of the day, I think that is actually a pretty smart course of action that if you are relying entirely this entire game on Omni Knight giving you Repel, and obviously we've seen two or three times this game that that won't always be the case, get uh, a do-it-yourself card with uh, the BKB for your own. And the thing is that the problem with that is then you have two item slots dedicated to a mm -hmm. defensive mindset, a Lincoln Sphere and a BKB, both of which don't give you much in terms of actual damage to deal. So let's see this set. Secret is 15 and 10 in games that go past 42 minutes and 6.82 compared to their 45 and 13 record hmm. overall. I thought it would be better than that. Yeah, but. they they generally speaking have kind of been the impressors as far as the late game comebacks, but maybe it's just a few that really stick out. The games that seem so far gone and they're able to pull it back, but generally speaking they still struggle. So here we go. Goodbye, FNG. Good smoke ain't coming out from Secret. And he's down for a minute. They actually yeah. could force a huge fight here and they have both ravages for it. And the minute uh they will have glyph to use, obviously. It looks like, actually, Ilden Stormrage is going to go for an Assault Kuras, and I think this is the right decision. Um, okay. This is going to give him some extra armor, and you really need this item up against uh, the Elder Titan. I think this is absolutely uh -huh. a fantastic choice for them. So, Yeah, yeah they but... have the Vlads from the Omni Knight, and they, of course, the Garden Angel would give them some things. But again, you have to itemize this if you don't have the Omni Knight. Other than the Lincoln Sphere, which obviously is the synergetic item, the other five slots have to be okay, but in the worst case scenario, what if the Omni Knight's not here? I'm sitting at zero armor is essentially the answer there, unless you pick up this AC. So good call. 22 plus 15, that is without the natural order of procking on him. And he's going to walk forward, and he actually right clicks on his Simba. He bashed him up immediately. That the Ravage is going to go. Error. Refresh is going to go as well. Illidan is in trouble, and he is done so. Three dead. He doesn't have buyback. Are you kidding me, Polar? What are you doing? Oh, no. They walked forward. They weren't expecting it. They're going to lose a set of racks here, if not the game. This They were on the doorstep, and they killed a PA, and no buyback. 3-2-2. Two, two, two. They're going to try to defend with Phobos coming in. He's going to jaunt away, but this is now, I feel like, Secret's sets of racks to take. Yeah, that was an unfathomably huge pickoff. Killing the Batrider, killing the PA. The Omni is back, but now he's got nobody to support. This mid lane of Rex is definitely going down, and uh, all GK Bobos can do is just keep on doing the shenanigans. A few nukes here and there, but they can't stop them. They can't pull them off the Rex. Both are going down here in the mid lane, and that is giving a huge win to Secret. The game is not done yet. They're actually going to push on this tier 3 up top, and this is where VP Boy can start looking at the timers, thinking maybe we can get that since there are no Ravages. Nicole, uh, Kuroki's gonna get Dream Coiled up here, he's waiting Rifted as well, and the Guardian Angel goes a bit early, and actually Secret have yet to take the Tier 3 tower, and they're taking a bit of harass here, but the Urn is gonna keep them alive and well. Uh, and, th and that was probably, when they took that set of racks, when they were taking that Tier 3 tower, that's when Secret are like, wait, he actually doesn't have buyback, and they start celebrating wildly. They take the set of racks, it's a good start, they don't want to go any further. And I think that's a good choice, but this still does keep Virtus Pro Polar in the game. One set of racks against a Battle Fury PA is not the worst thing in the world. It is not, you know, impossible to deal with. And I think that they could have gotten a lot more off the back end of that if they had wanted to, but... S4 is now up to 17 Bloodstone charges, just getting so many kills, so many assists, being very involved, and yeah, he's been uh, now able to build up a Dagon, maybe Dagon E-Blade is the way to go here, since, as you mentioned, she's not going BKB, and uh, so far they found a couple of opportunities where she just isn't repelled. There is that two-second frame, there is the gas animation, or there is just a dead or, or out-of-position Omni Knight, so they will at least have the uh, Global Guardian Angel pretty soon, if... Uh, FNG buys out with this Blade of Alacrity so that he will have a Guardian Angel available no matter where you are on the map. But with all this ma these magical effects, you can be completely immune to physical damage and still go down to Team Secret. They yeah. really proved it there with the big nukes, the big explosive pickoff on the PA, if you can even call it that. He kind of just walked right up to them. But uh, all the same, it is going to be them on kind of a knife side. So they cannot for afford another error like that. No, they really can't. I mean, uh, if, if PA dies again without buyback, that's just going to be the game, I think, at that point. And he's not even close. He's 1,200 gold away. You want to farm, but all of a sudden, Secret are, they found new life. They are very aggressive in, in where they're playing. Now, Phobos is maybe going to get caught out here. He can blink away, however, and he will do so. But, yeah, this is uh, it's a tightrope walk here if you're Virtus Pro Polar. So, mm -hmm. they're going to try to get buyback as quickly as possible, but they also need to get Roche on. I, I think if Secret get Roche, they're going to be so happy, and 
Ilden with an Aegis could be huge, although he doesn't have a slot for it, so that's the thing. They might just give the Aegis to, like you talked about before, FNG, but maybe a fight gonna break out. Puppy gonna get Yules up. Now there's gonna be BKB popped as well. Puppy's gonna get last shot. His uh, usage of the grave is there. Ilden's trying to jump in. He does crit Big Daddy once he's getting right clicked down by Kuroki. They blow him up. He's not dead yet. Kuroki, now there's the double there ravage. They're gonna kill two. They're gonna kill Jeez. three. They're gonna kill four. Simba with the huge plays yet again, and that is more than likely going to be the game here for Secret. An unbelievable set of double ravages coming up from Secret and too aggressive for British Pro, Pro, British Pro Polar. They are going to take the second game in this series somehow, some way. Uh, it just goes to show that no game is unthrowable. Where one hero seems to be impossible to assail, they just find every way in the book to bring her down. To bring down the Omni Knight that's, uh, I guess, holding up that house of cards. And yeah, they take this game away. They're going to go right for the throne here, and there is no way DK Phobos holds it. GG is called, and, and that's going to be it. I mean, a really good strat and some generally good play from BP Polar, but just a couple of plays actually really cost them here. You had one job, guys, but uh, in the end, it's going to be Team Secret to unravel it, and they are going to be taking this series 2-0. That was a game that should have went into a different direction, but Secret with some extraordinarily decent plays, and you could set that symbol. I don't know if he won them the game, but he certainly did his utmost to do so. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was quite the double...